Hi, I'm Ken Spector with LivingEco.com, and I'm here today with Riggs Eckleberry. And Riggs is the CEO and president of a company called Origin Oil. Hi, Riggs. Hi, Ken. Nice Good to meet you. You too. So, can you tell me a little bit of background? What is Origin Oil? Origin Oil is a pure technology company, uh, a lot like Dolby or Qualcomm, where we provide critical technology for now this new algae industry to make it sustainable and able to take over from petroleum over time. Okay, now what are we looking at back here? This looks like some sort of reactor. Yes, well in fact it's a nuclear reactor. It is a, a nuclear reactor. About to melt down in yes. fact. No, well, the, uh, algae is of course, comes in many strains, and so we're constantly experimenting with different strains from our customers uh, for various research projects in these tanks. We have six 200 gallon tanks that uh, allow us to experiment. We're not a grower, but obviously we need algae in order to make our processes work. Basically, we're focused on being a midstream player. People grow algae, mm -hmm. and we turn it into something that can be processed by end users in nutritional or chemical or petroleum applications. The price of natural gas extracted from the earth has gone down considerably. How is that affecting, let's say, your stock? How is that affecting your company? The good thing about algae, unlike other biofuels, is that it has a synergistic relationship with fossil fuels. When people mine fossil fuels, they're putting out huge amounts of CO2, and of course when they burn it, even more. Algae can actually uptake vast amounts of CO2. People don't realize that aquatic species make up about 2% of the world's biomass, but they absorb about 50% of the world's CO2. And so they're huge CO2 sinks. The, the, the fossil fuel industry is realizing more and more that they can use algae to actually re reduce their carbon footprint, become more sustainable, which of course will help us grow our industry by helping them. I received an email the other day from someone who's representing someone who has taken, has a process of taking natural gas pulled out of the earth and turning that into petroleum for cars and trucks. Mm -hmm. How does that affect your business? First of all, I think it's a wonderful thing that they're using natural gas um, aside from the carbon load. Um, and that still remains a huge issue. When you turn natural gas into liquid fuel, you are doing a huge amount of processing, which generates, again, enormous amounts of CO2. Somebody's got to do something about that. And guess what? Algae is a wonderful uh, CO2 sponge and much cheaper than digging holes in the ground and sticking the CO2 in it. So in terms of realistic solutions to CO2 issues, uh, you know, algae is a natural. So we're not really worried about it because we're the one biofuel that actually can, can help mitigate these carbon issues. Um, and over time, I think that it's going to become clear that algae is really a great fuel. But for the time being, we can help with remediate these issues and grow our industry. Nobody's worried right now about putting algae into gas tanks, right? right? There is so much demand for algae-based fuel to run ships, to run jets. The military has got this enormous demand. Of course, they say, sure, we'll use natural gas and base fuels. They'll use, what they want is diversity. Mm -hmm. So just because somebody just figured out how to make a fuel from natural gas doesn't mean they're gonna stop diversifying. Mm -hmm. They're on that course, they're gonna stay on it. So the algae industry really is in a great place where its job really is to scale up to the pent up demand, which I believe is huge. What could the government be doing to expedite the process of getting algae-based oil into our cars? We're very happy with what the government's doing right now, and, uh, and that's in the area of standard setting. Um, we're working closely with the Department of Energy on creating such a standard, and, um, and that's really going to help not only with algae standardization, but all biofuels in what's called the blendable feedstock standard. It's kind of geeky, but that means a lot. So if, if they can really enforce uh, uh, a, a, a standard on all producers that the refiners can then use, we'll actually see a flow of sustainable, renewable fuel in our gas pumps. Now, it might be a mix of algae with uh, camelina and jatropha and, and perhaps a little corn, whatever, um, but it, it will be um, uh, automatically self-balancing. Once you have all these fuel sources going to one standard, then it's a commodity play and you can go, well, okay, algae harvests daily and corn harvests every few months, 
there's a big difference there and perhaps it's more productive to use the algae. So level playing field is very important for the algae industry and that's our big focus. And how is ExxonMobil and other companies that have invested heavily, not that heavily for the amount of money that they have in algae oil, how do they feel about you? Well, I think I think the uh, petroleum companies like us very much. I, uh, I chat with them occasionally and um, they are, they really like algae. They like it being essentially very similar to petroleum. Uh, if the world is moving away from petroleum, which they've, the Petroleum Institute has stated that it's only about 20 years of easy petroleum. So 20 years is not a long time for, a, for an oil and gas company. Uh, they look ahead to something like algae, and they'd rather have algae than ethanol, for example. They think it's much more sustainable. But they know that it's the beginning of the end, uh, and they, they want to own the next phase, and that's why they're invested in um, you know, genetic modification of algae by, uh, by people like Craig Venner, and uh, you know, just about every other major producer of, of algae has got an oil industry investor. They could potentially invest in you or own your company in the future. I, th- I think what was more likely than oil companies investing in us or buying us out um, is that we would, uh, you know, help their companies and get revenue that way. Um, I can't really speculate on who might eventually. Um, us, if any. Our, our plan really is to, again, you know, Qualcomm never got acquired. It became too profitable and too high capitalized, mm-hmm. and it remained on the side. So, so if you think about the cell phone kind of analogy, you've got Qualcomm being a software and, and standards provider, um, and then you've got the, equi- the handset makers, and you've got the network operators. Mm-hmm. Well, similar kinds of uh, hierarchies are going to develop in algae. So, there's no reason why Origin Oil would be bought out. It would just simply become an incredibly well embedded, highly profitable player that would have, you know, many years of fine profits ahead. Mm-hmm, sure. Now, these bioreactors are creating algae, but algae can also be created in the sun um, as the light source to create photosynthesis. What is the difference between using a bioreactor and creating algae in the sun? Well, there's really no difference. The only difference is that this is not a sustainable way to make algae you want to use this, the sun for your algae because the sun's energy is free, whereas this has a fossil fuel cost. Now, we do it here because it's controlled and it's a research environment, and often you'll start out algae using artificial light and then release it into the solar environment. But, you know, we long ago you know, came to recognize, like the rest of the industry, that you've got to use the sun or uh, to, to be sustainable. And today, I would say, you know, all producers, unless they have a very unusual source of fuel like geothermal of energy, then they're going to be looking at the sun. And I had originally heard that algae-based oils were being produced using human waste as the, as the food source. Is, is there, there isn't human waste in there. Is there some sort of nitrate in there? Yeah, we typically, there, there's, there's standard um, feeds for, for algae that we use currently. Um, that have all the required balance. Now you can um, configure uh, an algae pond to take um, not the waste itself, but rather the nitrates from the waste uh, and essentially denitrify the the sewage and feed the algae. Um, But again, in a research setting, we just use the formulas that we buy off the shelf. Is this a good time to invest in your company? The stock's down at a reasonable level where just about anyone watching this video can afford at least a few shares. That's uh, very cute. Uh, Ken, and I won't say too much because uh, we are in registration for, uh, for a public offering. However, I might point out that uh, biofuel stocks in general are a great investment because while petroleum projects can get you like a 10% return, you can see a 20% return from typical petroleum uh, 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 biomass type projects that came from um, a, a, a major banker. So I think we're really talking about the fundamentals of biofuels here uh, rather than any specific stock. I really can't go beyond that. Sure, sure. <laughs> and uh, I really invite people to make up their own mind. We are spending millions of dollars on taking our technology to market. Right now we've come out with something called the Algae Appliance, which is a, a compact entry-level harvester that everyone can put to use. It's kind of like the Model T of the industry mm-hmm. that you know, we compare a lot uh, in, our, in our more fanciful me- uh, moments to the invention of the browser, 1994, that made the internet take off. So we think this is that critical to the algae industry because it's very low energy, 
non-chemical, and high flow. And that, we believe, is going to revolutionize the whole algae industry by having sustainable harvesting. At the end of the day, algae is great if you can get it out of the water. Mm -hmm. If it's stuck in all that water, then you've got a big energy problem unless you can figure out some smart way to get it out, and we've done that. How do you expect to make your big bucks in the next two to three years? Well, Origin Oil is in revenue. We booked this year uh, seven figures in sales. Um, and, of course, we have uh, a while before we're profitable because we have a strategy of fully developing our technology before going after uh, you know, going pro profitability. And that is our backers strongly believe that the real benefit of the company is not day-to-day -day revenues, but a thoroughly validated technology that the industry recognizes is key and, of course, ends up being adopted widely. What are some of the limitations of making algae into a commercially viable uh, substance? The, the first limitation for algae as, as a potential commercial substance is what you see here. It looks like Kool-Aid. And how do you get the Kool-Aid out of the water? So that's the biggest challenge of all is that it's sitting in this tremendously dilute uh, even at the time of harvest, it could be 5,000 to 1 water to algae. Well, how do you get that down to 10 to 1 or even in more concentration than that? And right now in this industry, it's a very high energy, chemical intensive process that we are revolutionizing. So you might say that's the number one issue. I would say the number two issue has to do with figuring out really how to grow algae industrially that is with daily harvests and all that stuff. And, and the, the industry that we support is busy figuring that out. So we're doing our part in the midstream, and a lot of our partners are doing that in the upstream. For those who don't know, uh, who are watching this interview, what is the difference between the oil that is coming out of this algae and oil that is drilled from deep within the earth? Okay, when we say oil, we're talking, uh, there's two different things. One is the, the lipids, the equivalent of cooking oil that is in each algae cell mm -hmm. and which is very good for omega-3s and for biodiesel and so forth. Or there's the wider definition of oil which is the entire algae organism that is processed into petroleum much the same way that nature processed algae millions of years ago. Nature didn't go around separating the oil and putting it aside and then you know making oil from just the lipids. So the entire algae biomass these days we think of as oil. Mm, interesting. So let's just say a large ship were to carry this oil to from here to China, let's just say. What would happen if this were to spill? We'd have a, we'd have a lot of green stuff. Algae is, of course, everywhere. It's in the air, it's in the water, it's on land. Um, algae is a very beneficial organism. When we see algae blooms in the ocean, that's algae trying to absorb all the vast amounts of fertilizers that we've thrown into the ocean or into, into rivers. Mm -hmm. And so really it's trying to carry out a beneficial uh, uh, task. Now, no ship is gonna carry algae-based petroleum to China. And here's the big reason why. Algae is a localized fuel. It will be made wherever there's CO2. And there's plenty of CO2 in China. Right. Right? So, so think of it as a highly distributed type production. It's going to totally alter the balance of power and energy because everybody will make it. Right. Now, growers will make something that is very close to being petroleum. We call it bio oil. Mm -hmm. And bio oil is water free precursor to any kind of diesel, kerosene, um, you know, bunkers, whatever gasoline that you might want to use. And so the refining industry knows what to do with bio oil and producers will make it right on the premise and ship off something that, that is concentrated enough that they can do so profitably. When do you feel that these machines or there will be enough of these machines to be able to make this type of oil commercially feasible? Right. Well, the role for algae in its early days, um, obviously it needs, it needs to scale up. And unlike things like Facebook, it can't just grow, it has to be built. And so it takes time, it takes years to build up capacity. Our role today is increasingly being defined as a kind of a turbocharging uh, fuel for other fuels. So let's say you take uh, forestry waste. 
that has maybe a 10% um, energy conversion. So for every umpteen amount of fuel of forestry, you get only 10% fuel value. Out of algae, you might get 60 or 70%. So now if you get all that forestry and convert it to fuel and throw in the algae, now you've got some real calories. Mm -hmm. So in this new program that the Department of Energy and the Department of Defense are working on, they want to bring all fuels together into one standard. So biofuels of any kind end up being one thing, mm -hmm. and an algae in that picture is as an, an enabler for all the other fuels, because they're not going to go away overnight. Now over time, of course, algae will go from being a, a help, sort of the, the little nitrous oxide, to being the actual fuel itself and we have time to do that. Are you getting support from the government on these machines and on this technology? Well, our customers are getting support from the government. We don't actually need support. We're, we're R&D intensive. There's 12 people in the company, so we're just fine. Um, what we are seeing is this tremendous support, primarily by uh, the Department of Defense and the Department of Energy for algae production. They're pushing biofuels in general, the Navy is dead serious about what they call the Green Fleet, uh, but they're especially interested in algae, and so they are paying way too much money for algae fuel, which uh, companies like Solozyme, who are my primary producer of algae, are taking advantage of to, to ramp up their capacity. So even though in America we don't have a good carbon tax framework or carbon credits or anything like that, we do have a very strong military push for fuel diversity because they have men dying to take fuel to Kabul, right? And then the Department of Energy is, is keenly interested in bringing together all these different diverse fuels under one feedstock standard that can then be used uh, across the entire transportation spectrum. So the oil that is created in these machines eventually can just make it to a standard gasoline station, 76 around the corner. Is that correct? It can just be pumped into those tanks? Algae is petroleum. Petroleum is old algae. Yeah. So they, ha they have identical chemical composition, except that the petroleum has, you know, mineral content from having been fossilized, right? Mm -hmm. So anything that petroleum can do algae can do except maybe become road tar uh, and and so it's it's relatively easy to turn algae into genuine drop-in fuels and when do you anticipate that happening where i can go to a, a you know a gas station around the corner and purchase algae fuel and pump my car with it well it's happening already at the airline level uh you know united has committed to a 20 million uh, gallon uh, uptake of 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 Avjet mm -hmm. made with 50% petroleum and 50% algae based fuel. And um, that's obviously the easy way to start is with a nice big bulk contract. Uh, we could deliver, by we, I mean the industry could deliver gasoline today, but it's a matter of tooling up the refineries and so forth. Mm -hmm. The easy way around it is to do um, uh, jet fuel. And the reason is it's relatively easy to go from algae to uh, through a hydro treating process to jet fuel. So that's what's being done now. Mm -hmm. There's no uh, technical reason why we shouldn't have algae gasoline today. It's really more to do with logistics. It's going to change the world. All I can tell you is that our strategy is to be the Dolby or Qualcomm of the industry, uh, which is a highly leveraged model, and ultimately we think very successful. This is fantastic. Thank you so much, Ray. It's, it's incredible. Appreciate it. Thank you.